Please, step out of the room. I'm Dr. Broda, head of infection control, CDC. And your protective suits are not adequate. Turns out they don't have to be. Rash under the arm means it's not smallpox. False alarm. Sorry. Hope the traffic wasn't too bad. Rash is consistent with smallpox. Not if it presents after pustules. She's probably just allergic to the bed sheets or the hospital gown, or you simply didn't notice it. We're gonna airlift blood and tissue samples to Atlanta. We'll have the DNA results in 18 hours. In the meantime, please step out of the room. You brought the plane? Cool. We need to test for TB. TB might fit, but it's too slow moving to kill her anytime soon. There's no way the CDC is going to give us access. That's why we don't think it's TB. We think it's been in Chicago disease, which could kill it before the results come back. And once I gain access, I run the TB test. You could have said all that in there. In front of the narc? As if. Are you so afraid of this new girl we have to take elaborate measures every time you want to skirt around ethical boundaries? Elaborate measures? We took a walk. Walk you would have taken anyway. Actually, I saved you from the horrible post-differential traffic jam. Mening Jokakis. We believe the rash under Julie's armpit is actually petechial spots. When added to the high fever, the vomiting. There haven't been any seizures, no stiff neck. If I could just gain access to the patient, I could investigate the rash further. All right, I'll take a look. I can weigh your gear. I'll take every necessary precaution. You come to me with a weak diagnosis. I even offer to investigate, but that's not good enough for you. What's really going on here? Sir, are you feeling all right in there? It's just a headache. Baby. Baby. Oh, God. Dad, you're bleeding. Somebody, please. Get in here now. This is not Mening Jokakis. You're not getting in here. So I guess honesty is the best policy. Why'd you say that? Seriously, to establish your viewpoint as if I didn't already know it? It demonstrates some weird cross-generational female solidarity with Cuddy. Actually, I was just trying to fill the awkward silence. Why have they stopped? You can't go out there. Why did you stop? Get out of the hallway. He does not have smallpox. Yes, he does. It's just... He's just developed pustules. He's now too dangerous to transport. Get out of the hallway. Julie doesn't have smallpox. Did I just dream the part where I finally agreed it was smallpox? Well, if what I thought was reality was actually a dream, then the reverse. Oh my God, I had a threesome with Beyonce and Lady Gaga. Uh, she doesn't have pustules on her palms or the soles of her feet. The dad does have pustules there. So as he gets smallpox, it skips her. If I leave like that, you should follow. We gave it to him. Where's Chase? You do realize we don't all live together, right? Well, then just, we gave it to him. No pustules on the daughter's palms, so? So, therefore, your theory is you asked me to take the dad's blood, but I accidentally injected him with smallpox. Exactly. Although, technically, it was the vaccine virus, which is what the smallpox vaccine is made from. Same symptoms as smallpox, but only half the calories and almost none of the lethality. You sound like one of those anti-vaccine cranks. You can't develop full-blown symptoms from the vaccine this quickly. You can if you're immunocompromised. Am I the only one who reads these things? Dad had kidney cancer. Six years ago, he's been in remission. Well, it's obviously back. Shot his immune system, made him vulnerable to the vaccine, which will get better on interferon. So if he responds to the treatment, that proves he doesn't have smallpox. Then what does the daughter have? Damn. I was hoping you weren't gonna ask me that. 
we please just focus on the disease we just diagnosed and can treat? What's more likely? He got smallpox the day after we immunized him for it, or he's sick from the vaccine itself? You got any proof the kidney cancer is back? Well, let me give him this. When he gets better, that'll be the proof you need. I'll put on one of your fancy space suits, and I promise I won't kiss him on an open sore. You know who Janet Parker is? In 1978, she was working at a university in England. Someone in a research lab on the floor below screwed up. Some smallpox virus managed to float up through the vents into the room where she was working. She died four days later. The last known person to die from smallpox. And the person in charge of the lab was so destroyed, he killed himself. Now that he's shedding, I can't open that door for anyone. Hey, look, there's the proof you need. There's blood in the urine bag. His kidneys are shutting down. He's in the final stages of the disease. If smallpox was causing the kidney failure. The blood would be brown. It's red because the kidney cancer is back and this is not smallpox. I'm not opening that door. Well, that makes one of us. Hey! Hey! You're insane! But I'm right! I hope you are. Because I can't let you out now. what happens when you have no respect for authority, no respect for anything. You don't think it's a little much to use the threat of death to win a totally separate argument with your boyfriend? You think this is about the other thing? It does seem to track suspiciously closely. I don't care right now that you lied to me. I want you to stay alive. And if I do, does that mean I win both arguments? Put the suit on. It's unnecessary, Mom. This is why I didn't want them telling you. That's why I'm glad they didn't tell Wilson. Dr. House? I'm getting worse, aren't I? Interferon takes a little time to work. Don't worry. Tell Broda that I'm increasing his oxygen. Get my team down here. <laughs> 